time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching all around the world. I am your friendly neighborhood philosopher, David Wood. And with me now, of course, is the Assyrian Encyclopedia himself, Sam Shimon. How you doing, Sam? By the grace and mercy of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, doing well and trusting the Spirit to fill us to glorify Jesus Christ. So good to see you again. And also with us for the first time, all the way from Mumbai, India, we have Dr. Shuaib Syed. And uh, how are you doing, Doctor? Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah. Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah, mashallah. Um, and uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for uh, everyone here? Tell us a little bit about what you do. Your, 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 your sound is double, double. Your, your, it's confusion. Oh, your no, no, no. Uh, uh, I think you probably, uh, you'll need to turn off your, uh, if you have YouTube. Do you have YouTube oh. open? So it's repeating. Yeah, that that's because you're you're probably hearing me through Skype and through YouTube. So so turn off your YouTube. Okay, okay. Oh. Do you have YouTube open? One second, everyone. We just want to get this taken care of here at the beginning. Okay, I'm fine. <clears throat> Is that fine? Uh, do, do you still hear me twice or just once? No, 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 once, once. Okay, okay. okay. I, yeah. All right. So, um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for all our viewers? Do you hear me? I can hear you. Good chance. Uh, you asking Sam or me? Uh, oh, I'm talking to you. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for everyone? They okay, know. They, they know Sam. Okay, I'm Dr. Shweb Sayed. I'm a medical practitioner. I, as I told you, I'm still practicing, and I'm a specialist in diabetes, uh, not uh, like other diabetologists. I treat diabetes in seven weeks' time. He is back to normal. He has to stop all the anti uh, all anti diabetic medicines. Alhamdulillah. And also obesity. If you are fat and you want how many kg, I can make you that kg. If you are 100, I, if you want 70, I can make you 70 in three, four months' time. Alhamdulillah. So I'm especially that. But, but I'm Alhamdulillah from my college days. This is, I think, more than 25, 30 years now that I'm Alhamdulillah uh, in the field of dawa. Dawa means uh, calling people towards Islam and uh, speaking to Christians, pastors, priests in Bombay, because these people, they invited me to their Bible classes. And once they invite me to the Bible classes, I listen to them and I start discussing. This became my hobby. And Alhamdulillah, this is how I'm with you. All right. And uh, I see how smart you are. You see me and Sam and you decide to tell us about uh, losing weight. Okay, yeah. Man, but you're not, why, you're not, you, you both are not overweight. Don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, uh, just to give everyone an idea of what we're doing uh, this evening, um, uh, Dr. Shuaib Saeed uh, has asked for 15 minutes to give a presentation on Muhammad and Muhammad being a true prophet. So we're going to give him uh, 15 minutes and then we'll go ahead and have a discussion about the points. It Oh, go ahead. Is it is it only fifteen minutes or a little more than that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cut you off right at fifteen minutes, but I'll give you I'll give you a time signal. I'll give you like you know five minutes, and then like two, and then one, and then when your time's up, I'll, I'll do this. But it, I'm not gonna cut you right off. We're we're kind of laid back. No, so I'm just asking you only fifteen minutes or twenty minutes, or I I can go fifteen plus minus twenty minutes. Uh, you can go. Yeah, you asked for you asked for fifteen though. But if you you yeah, can, I asked you fifteen. You could go a little over. Yeah, you could go a little over. Oh, but you can always you oh. can always you can always expand upon some points uh, late, later on. Okay, okay. 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 Uh, okay. Everyone ready? And Sam, you and me should probably mute our okay. mics so there's no uh, additional background <clears throat> noise from us. And right. other than that, uh, Doctor, you can begin whenever you're ready. 
Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready since uh, more than a half an hour. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'in fa'ud billahi minna shaitani rajim bismillahi rahmani rahim. Wa ma arsalla ka illa rahmati lil alamin. Don't worry, I'm not going to speak in Arabic. I don't know Arabic as a language. But Alhamdulillah, uh, welcome all of you and uh, my salam, my greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to all my Muslims and non-Muslim brothers. May peace and blessings of Allah be on all of you. Uh, the topic that I have, I'm asked to speak on, or I gave the topic, uh, evidences, ad evidences for Muhammad to be the true prophet of God, evidences to know Muhammad, the true prophet of God, but it is changed to was Muhammad, was, uh, if Muhammad to, was Muhammad the true prophet of God. No. So, Alhamdulillah, this was my topic. Let me start from the beginning. What I say beginning, when, when I say beginning, it means when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was in his mother's womb. His father, Abdullah, died. When he was six years old, his mother also died. So, so at the age of six, he was doubly orphaned. No father, no mother, an orphan child. An orphan child like that, he grows up in a society full of evil. Evil is the norm. Everybody is practicing vices, evil. Evil is the norm. The days are known as Ayyamul Jahiliya, the days of ignorance. Practicing evil is something normal that time. But Prophet Muhammad grows up in the same society. He is growing up 8 years old, 10 years old. 15 years old, 20 years old, 25 years old, but not a single evil he gets involved into. Not a single evil he gets involved into. How is it possible? This is amazing. At the time of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, people were drunkards. They were alcoholics. They imbibed alcohol. They took pride to have alcohol of ancient brand at their homes. They used to serve alcohol to their guests and visitors at their home. Most of them, they were alcoholics, alcohol, drunkards. Prophet Muhammad in the same society, growing up in the same society, 10 years old, 15 years old, 30 years old, 20, 25 years old, he's growing in the same society, but not a single drop of alcohol in his mouth. How is it possible? This is amazing. People at, in Arabia at that time, they worshipped idols, 360 idols kept in the Kaaba, 360 idols. They were idol worshippers. Little children, they copy whom? Their parents. If the parents are not there, the elders. They copy the elders. What do you expect a child like Muhammad growing up in the society to do like worshipping the idols? Because he would follow the elders. He will do the imitate the same thing and he should worship the idol. But no, Prophet Muhammad, he grows up in the same society. Eight years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old. But never ever he bowed down to idols. Never ever he bowed down to idols. How is it possible? This is amazing. At the age of 20, 25, he earned the title as Sadiqul Amin, you are the most truthful, most trustworthy. Most truthful, most trustworthy. He earned the title as Sadiqul Amin. In his lifetime, he never spoke a single lie. He didn't speak a single lie. He never spoke a single lie. People agreed to that. People agreed to him. Because when he stood on Safa Marwa, the hill, when he stood on Sofa Varma, people gathered around, around about him. And when he said, oh people, from behind the mountain, if I tell you an army is going to come and attack you, will you believe me? And they all said, we will believe you because we never heard a lie from you. You never spoke a lie before. So they agreed that he didn't speak a lie. A person who did not speak a single lie for all his 40 years of his life, for all his life, he didn't speak a single lie all his life. So for 40 years, 
Why people lie to benefit oneself? He did not speak a single lie for 40 years to benefit himself. Can you imagine a person who did not speak for 40 years to benefit himself? He starts speaking lies from the next day onwards, 40 plus one day for 23 years continuously. On a daily basis, lies after lies, hundreds of lies, thousands of lies, daily basis. This is, this is just impossible. So I say that when he didn't speak a single lie all his life to benefit oneself, why he should lie for Akhra, for year after, after 40 plus one day for next 23 years. So when I say, when he said that I am the prophet of God, he was not lying, he was speaking the truth. When he said that angel Gabriel visits him, he was not speaking a lie, he was speaking the truth. He spoke truth all his life. How is it possible a man who did not speak a single lie all his life for 40 years start speaking lies after life? No, this is just impossible. This is how we come to know that Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, he was the true prophet of God. Now, from the seerah, from the biography of the Prophet ﷺ, if you read his life stories, any, I would suggest the audience to read one uh, book uh, that is the biography of Prophet ﷺ, The Sealed Nectar by Safiur Rahman Mubarak Puri. And if he reads his, this biography, Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah, he will come across many evidence and he should read this book, book with an intention that let me find out the evidences and proof for the genuineness and the for the authenticity of the prophethood for prophet muhammad the true prophet muhammad the true prophet of god with this intention you start this reading this book and you will come across several instances several in events which will prove to you that prophet muhammad sallam was the true messenger of god he will come across the incident of miraj going ascension, going to the heaven. At the first moment, at the, at the first shot, you will see how is it possible? How can a person in a, in a moment's time, he can go to Jerusalem and come back and that also he goes to the heavens and come back. And at the first moment, you will realize this is false. This is nothing true. But when you read it correctly and attentively, and if you read it properly, you will find the proofs for his mirage, for his ascension, and you will amazed that Definitely, you will be confirmed again that he is the messenger of Allah. Now, if you read biography of Prophet Sallallahu you will read the migration of Prophet from Makkah to Medina. From Makkah to Medina, the, on his way, there were several miraculous incidents took place. You will be amazed. If you read, you will ha listen, you will read, you will understand the Battle of Badr. Battle of Badr also, if you read intentively to be this intention to know how is the Prophet Sallallahu true Prophet of God? He will come across that Prophet Muhammad with a very meager army, 313 people with ill-equipped, Ill only two swords and two horses and with an army of thousand, more than thousand people and winning that battle. In that battle, if you read, the angels came down to fight with the Muslims. Angels coming down fighting with the Muslims are proof that he's the genuine Prophet of God, true Prophet of God, and they won it. Alhamdulillah. So I say that only you have to be sincere. Just you need to be sincere to know that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the true Prophet of God. If you read with sincerity, you will definitely accept that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the true messenger of Allah. A wise man, Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi, he said, you can beat 40 scholars with one fact. You can beat 40 scholars with one fact, but you cannot beat one idiot with 40 facts. I'm not as telling you you all idiots, but I'm telling you I can change this phrase here, but you cannot beat one insincere person with 40 facts. I'm changing that idiot. I don't want to, I don't want to use the idiot word for you all. So I can repeat, you can beat 40 scholars with one fact, but you cannot beat one insincere person with 40 facts. Alhamdulillah. Now Deuteronomy chapter 18 was number 20. Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 18 was number 20. It says how to know that he is the false prophet. And I read, but the prophet which, will, which shall presume to speak a word in my name 
or that shall speak in the name of other gods even that prophet shall die so the criteria is that if you claim falsely that you are prophet of god you speak a word which god has not spoken and you are speaking presumably presumptuously and god has not spoken or you speak in the name of other gods then even that prophet shall die punishment is that you shall die now in jeremiah chapter 28 verse number 15 and 15 to 17 15 to 17 jeremiah chapter 28 15 to 17 hanania is the false prophet there mention hanania is the false prophet god is telling hanania you are the false prophet you will die within one year and he died the seventh month he died the seventh month within one year so it means that if you claim prophethood falsely you will be punished with death immediately or within one year at the most and god says in malachi chapter 3 verse 6 i am the lord and i do not change so in this case the rule is that false prophet should die and if he is not dying that time within one year so god is saying i do not change i am the lord i do not change so this rule will not change so prophet muhammad in his lifetime they attempted to kill him several times several attempts to kill him several times but all the time every time he survived and he was saved he, he did not he did not die at the at the age of 40 at the age of 40 he declared that he is a prophet of god at the age of 40 if he was a false prophet he should die at the age of 40 or within one year at the age of 40 but he did not die at the age of 40 he lived 40 years 50 years 60 years 63 years he lived 23 years more he accomplished his mission the whole quran was revealed in during in that duration alhamdulillah and he did not die that day. at the day at the, uh, in his lifetime he was poisoned by jewish women and his, uh, one companion and he they were visitors to this woman and they he, she served a poisoned food prophet muhammad he took a morsel and he didn't like it and he spat it out but the other person who ate he died the same day immediately the same day he died so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he survived all the death attempts made on him and alhamdulillah this is how we know that prophet muhammad is the true genuine prophet of god according to ezekiel chapter uh, sorry not ezekiel deuteronomy chapter 18 verse number 20 now john, john chapter 16 verse number 12 to 14 i have many things to say unto you now i have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now how bit when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak he shall glorify me he shall show you things to come who is this he 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 it is not it 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 for holy spirit as the christians would say that this refers to holy spirit it is he 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 referring to a human being like prophet jesus now the greek word is echo and lelio which means hearing organ speaking organ like a human being like a human being hearing organ speaking organ like a human being now the christian world they take this prophecy for holy spirit holy spirit according to your belief is the third person in trinity third person in trinity means that he is god almighty if he is god almighty how can you read this statement he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that he shall he speak how can god will not speak of himself whatsoever god will hear and that this is just rubbish so again we conclude that jesus jesus christ you are prophesying a man like him and this prophecy we say is prophet muhammad first john chapter 4 verse number 1 to 3 beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirit whether they are of god don't believe every spirit but try the spirit whether they are from god because many false prophets are gone out of in the world many false prophets are gone out so prophet word is used synonymously with the spirit hereby you know the spirit of god 
this is how you know which is the true prophet of god every spirit every prophet that confesseth that jesus christ is come in flesh is of god so if jesus christ is come in flesh then i'll take few minutes more if jesus christ is is come in flesh then he is from god prophet muhammad claim and glorified jesus christ is upon him and you can find in the quran encyclopedia is with you he will confirm that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he glorified jesus christ is upon him in chapter 4 verse number 171 in chapter 19 verse number 30 several places alhamdulillah 25 times he is mentioned in the quran alhamdulillah 25 times so jesus christ was prophet, mentioned by uh, by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he is the he is the he is human being he came in flesh every spirit that confesseth not that jesus christ is come in the flesh if the spirit confesses the prophet confesseth that jesus christ did not come in flesh that that spirit that prophet is not of god where of and this spirit that and this spirit and this that spirit of an antichrist he is an antichrist where of you have heard that it should come and, and the word says that you know that it should come you were of you heard that it should come and even now already is it in the world the antichrist is already present at that time who is that antichrist you have to find out at that time who is say that jesus christ did not come in flesh and you will easily come to know who is that antichrist and that person is there at the time when it, the verse is spoken even now already is it in the world this so this does not this antichrist does not refer to prophet muhammad prophet muhammad is not during that time so again it confirms that prophet muhammad is the genuine prophet of god and alhamdulillah if a next session i get i will prove to you how quran is miraculous and once you prove that quran is miraculous then you know that this is prophet muhammad from this is from prophet muhammad and now if quran is miraculous then prophet muhammad is the true messenger of allah true messenger of god this is how you come to know that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the true messenger of god with this i conclude wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alamin thank you doctor um now dave yeah you hear me make make sure yeah we we cover all these points before we go to another subject so all these points got to be covered before we go to another subject oh yeah right? we we definitely want to go through all these in fact um uh dr shweb if you want to uh if we don't if we don't end up getting to the quran if we end up just going through these points yeah, about we'll, muhammad we'll you're you're pretty you're well you're welcome back uh you're welcome back uh any any other time to to finish up any points we don't get to to present your case for those um sam uh Yes. I'm assuming we'd like to go through these Bible passages first. Is, is yeah. that a good place can to start? Yeah. Can I start from yeah? Can I start from the bottom up? Yeah, you can do that. Because the Pericles. Yeah, because, but don't uh, uh, don't go. Yeah, don't don't, uh, don't respond to everything. Just uh, respond no, no. to some uh, of the points, and then we'll give we'll give the doctor a, a chance that's what I'm to. Not some of the points. Not no, some no. of the points. Uh, explain the, all the points. All yeah. The points, no, all no, you, 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 want, you want him yeah. to go through all of them now? Oh, well, hold on. Hold yeah, on, all the okay, all the okay. points. Let let me hear. Let me hear what he has to say. Time up. Uh, we're going to go through every point, but I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to go now to the Paraclete, give you a chance to respond. We're going to go because we're going to go through all the points, and I want your feedback. But I want you to now respond because you quoted John. So let me know when I'm ready. You're good. When we begin. Okay. So now, guys, I want you to pay attention. By the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, he appealed to the Paraclete. He even misrepresented what the Greek word means. But I'll get to that because I'm just going to take it for what it says because he quoted First John. He quoted John. He quoted John 16, 12 to 13. Let me read First John chapter right 4. Brother, do me yeah, a favor. Don't talk over me so because I didn't cut you off. I know we're going to go. John 16, 12 to 15. I'm making it easier for you. 14, 15 is going to be harder for you. So let me make it easy and gentle for you. Let me finish my point. First John chapter 4. He quoted verses 1 to 3. Let's continue reading to see if Muhammad is a false prophet by the very chapter he cited. He quoted it. This is what happens when you take verses out of context. He quoted verses 1 to 3 saying that Jesus Christ come in the flesh and that doesn't apply to Muhammad because he believes that Christ, Jesus is the Christ. Let's continue reading, okay? You, dear children, are from God and overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. 
We are from God, and whoever knows, God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who has been born of God knows God. Whoever does not love God does not know God because God is love. Here's the key. The same chapter. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. So my challenge to Shoaib is, Show me in the Quran where it says that Allah is the father of Jesus. Jesus is the son of God that was sent into the world to become flesh. That's what it means Christ came in the flesh. The son coming to become flesh to then offer himself as a sacrifice for our sins. Give me the ayah of the Quran that says that because you use this. Because if you don't, then the chapter you use proves Muhammad is a false prophet and antichrist. According to the chapter, you cite it. I didn't cite it. You did. So make sure you quote. When you come to respond to this, give me the ayat where it says, Allah is the father of Jesus. Jesus is his only son sent to the world to offer himself as a sacrifice. You won't find it. But let's go to John 16. This again is going to prove that Jesus is God and Muhammad's God. You quoted John 16, 12 to 15. Beautiful. Let's start at verse 7. But verily, truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the paraclete will not come to you. But if I go... Listen to this, Shuaib. I will send him to you. I, Jesus, will send him to you. When he comes, he'll prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Now let's read the part that you focused on. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. And here's the key. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So in that very chapter that you cited, Jesus says, God is the Father. I own everything that belongs to the Father. I will send him, and that's confirmed in John 15, 26, when the advocate or the paraclete, helper, everyone who translated comes, whom I, I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. So, Shuaib, you said this is Muhammad. Show me in the Quran where it says, God is the Father of Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God who came into the world to become flesh, to die for our sins. And if you believe this is Muhammad, Jesus said, I will send Muhammad to you from the Father. So do you believe Jesus is the Son of God, who owns everything that belongs to the Father, and that he sent your Muhammad, that Jesus in heaven sent your Muhammad? If so, you just made Jesus Allah, the God of Muhammad. So I want you to address these points before we deal with the rest, because we have a lot more for you. But go ahead, address this, please. Okay, you said that uh, Jesus died for your sins, of uh, uh, atoning sin, uh, resignable for sins. Dying for the sins is a lie in Christianity. Dying for the sins is a lie in Christianity. Why I say? Because the first time dying for the sins of uh, the, Jesus dying for the sins is mentioned by Paul. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 3 and 4, he says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. What is according to the scriptures? According to the scriptures means that it is there in the Old Testament because when he said the New Testament is not in existence. According to the scriptures means that it is there in the Old Testament. Then he was, was number four, he was buried and he rose again from the dead. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What is according to the scriptures? Meaning it is there in the Old Testament. I am asking the Christian world, where is there in the Old Testament? This is not there in the Old Testament. This is not there in the Old Testament. It is not there because this is against Jewish. Old Testament is a basically a Jewish scripture. 
you cannot have in a jewish scripture somebody dying hang on the cross is a cursed person how can this cursed person after he dies he is glorified and he is coming back to life again this is against the jewish belief mm. so this particular statement where he says that according to the scripture this is not there in the scripture paul is lying paul is lying that it is there in the scripture it is not there in the scripture it is not there in the old testament he is a liar and he says in romans chapter 3 verse number 7 if the truth of god is more abounded through my lie why i am judged as a sinner he is a liar now luke is a companion of paul luke is the companion of paul what he says listen again he is repeating the same thing luke chapter 24 verse number 46 thus it is written it behoved that christ should suffer and will rise again from the dead the third day behold christ should suffer so jesus uh, luke is also saying that thus it is written where it is written it is written in the scripture it is written in the old testament it is where is that in the old testament it is not there in the old testament again luke is also lying come again john chapter 20 verse number 9 for they knew not the scripture that he should rise again from the dead the third day they knew not the scripture they knew not the scripture means it is there in the scripture so when they are making our statement of swift scripture this is not referring to new testament because new testament did not exist at that time they are referring to the old testament the jewish book it is not there in the jewish book so even john is lying paul is lying luke is lying john is lying only two are left matthew and mark let me put them also a liar Uh, excuse See, me Matthew the day chapter 1 was number 17 john matthew chapter 1 was number 17 just just let him finish this point sam okay make sure you give him time because I now i went on tangents yeah, I because i'm going to discuss his arguments Ma but make Ma sure yeah matthew chapter 1 was number 17 for there are 14 generation from abraham to david from 14 generation from david to deportation of babylon jeconias there are 14 generation from deportation of babylon to jesus 14 14 14 If you count and you do homework in the genealogy in Matthew, it is fourteen, fourteen, thirteen. It is not fourteen, fourteen, fourteen. It is fourteen, fourteen, thirteen. So he is also lying. Matthew is also lying. Now Mark, Mark chapter four, verse number thirty-one. Among the seed that are sown in the ground, mustard seed is the smallest seed. He is saying. mustard seed jesus is making a statement according to mark but i am not putting jesus in problem i am not saying jesus is a liar i am saying mark is a liar he is saying mustard seed is the smallest seed sown in the ground that be in the ground smallest seed mustard seed mustard seed is not the smallest seed hibiscus seed is smaller than the mustard seed so again mark is also lying so christianity is based on lies falsehood all is lying Matthew is lying, Mark is lying, Luke is lying, John is lying. Christianity is based on falsehood. Now you said, where in the Quran, where in the Quran it says the father, father sent, father was was incorporated in Christianity. Father was was not used by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in history, if you go between 180 and 210 CE, there was an attempt to put the word father before God Almighty. They wanted to say God, Father God Almighty. so all the bishops present at that time bishop efficius bishop victor they were more prominent they were all agitated and fought that no father should not be added into before god almighty so they were not successful they were not able to put the word father before god almighty. so the word father was not in use till till one till 210 ce the first word father must have come into use later in period because you don't have any scripture from the first century you don't have any scripture from the second century you don't have any scripture from the third century what you have scripture from the fourth century onwards if you can produce complete scripture from the first century i can show you the word father is not used in the scripture so word father is an interpolation it is a concoction it is a addition word father. son of god do you you ask me do you do i consider jesus a son of god no i don't consider son of god in a literal sense but yes i know sons of god in the bible are in tons there are many sons of god genesis chapter 6 2 and 3 sons of god came unto daughters of men and begat children 
Exodus chapter 4 was number 20. He's going on tangents. You'll get you'll get time to respond to. Yeah, no, please. My son, Hold my on, wait, 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 okay. wait, wait, I got to no, chime no, in. No, no, let no. me complete. Whatever you ask me, let me complete that. I didn't Whatever ask you, you about ask me. Now it's getting chaotic. Sam, 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 let, let, him, let him finish this point with you the sons. You just asked me this question. Let me complete. Why are you interjecting? Okay. Let me complete first. So, sons yeah. of God in the Bible are interns. Exodus chapter 4, verse number 22. Israel is my son, my firstborn. Ephraim chapter 31. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse number 9. Ephraim is my son, my firstborn. Luke chapter 3 verse number 38, Adam is the son of God. And Christian, they say all others are a son of God. Jesus is the, the son of God. No, Adam is also the son of God. Luke chapter 3 verse number 38. Romans chapter 8 verse number 14. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So sons of God in the Bible in terms, there are many sons of God. So you cannot give the term son of God to be divine. You cannot mean son of God divine. You have to mean son of God, righteous person, prophet of God, one close to God, a pious person, son of God in that sense. You cannot, if you make divinity for, with son of God, then you will have to make every Tom, Dick and Harry who is led by the spirit of God as sons of God and they will all become God. You will have to make Jesus, you have to make Luke, uh, Adam as God. You have to make uh, the Jews as God. You can make, you can have, you have to make Israel as God. So you cannot afford to make mm -hmm. so many gods. Jesus okay. Christ is upon him, was son of God, but in a, okay. in a sense that he was a righteous prophet of God. That's all. All right. I'm thank sorry you. that I took. All right. No problem. No, no problem. Uh, hey, Dave, thank you. Thank something. you, doctor. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let, me, let me say something. I'll turn it over to you, Sam. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm counting that last part because you did bring up, uh, you did bring up um, Jesus being the son in 1 John 4. So, it has nothing uh, to do know. with the context either. But let oh, me no, say but, something. No, I want to say something. What, what, can I say something? What, one no? second. I'm going to hand, I'm going to hand it over to you. I'm just, I just want to recap for people because there are a lot of viewers who weren't here when we watch, uh, when we, when we started. Um, the doctor brought up the Gospel of John. Brought up the Gospel of John uh, in his case for Muhammad being a prophet, and he brought up. First John 4 to show that Muhammad is a prophet. Sam pointed out that according to First John 4, Muhammad is an antichrist, and that according to, uh, to the prophecy in John, Jesus is God who sends the comforter. And uh, the doctor responded by calling John a liar, calling John a liar, calling Matthew a liar, Mark a liar, Luke a liar, Paul a liar. I get... And I then, proof. and yeah, yeah, then, we'll, we'll, yeah. well, I mean, it's irrelevant. The entire Bible could be nothing but lies. That wouldn't make Muhammad a prophet, exactly. which is actually our, our topic. All right, I just wanted to recap there. All right, Sam, so how do you yes. respond to these points? Here's one thing I want to do. This man, uh, I'm going to now take my time to decimate his arguments, but I'm warning him now, and he better listen carefully. Anytime you attack, don't be upset when I embarrass your prophet and your deity. Because you went off topic because you can address the topic now let's talk about deception since you ran because you were afraid of my arguments i'm going to decimate your arguments one by one in chapter 3 of your quran chapter 3 verse 55 your god is called khairul makarim the worst the greatest of all deceivers he makes even satan look honest because your god is a wicked liar and a deceiver in chapter 8 verses 43 to 44 of the quran in chapter 8 verses 43 to 44 your god is so impotent and powerless and he's such a wicked demon he had to lie to your prophet in a dream making it seem to your prophet that the people at batter were less than less than they were because it says had he showed them to you as their actual number you would have been afraid so talking about lie your god is the most wicked evil imposter deceiver he makes satan look honest now you want to talk about more lies your God sanctioned your prophet in chapter you're, four. You are you're using Quran now. No, no, one, one second. I, 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 I didn't let I didn't let I didn't let Sam interrupt you. I didn't let Sam interrupt you. So let him. So why let him is respond. using Quran? Why is using Quran? What, you are asking why? This is a debate about. This is a debate. This is this is a debate about. Quiet. This is a debate about the prophethood of Muhammad. He's quoting the Quran. Your arguments, uh, I mean, if you get to go off topic and talk about Matthew and Mark when we're talking about whether Muhammad's a prophet, no, then did, obviously, obviously topic. he yeah, gets yeah, to quote he, the Quran. He said atoning sacrifice. Jesus died for sin. Look, we're, he, he we're not... He said atoning sacrifice. We're, he said atoning sacrifice. Okay. I didn't say atoning sacrifice. He Let said asking atoning sacrifice. Christianity could... keep yelling? Go ahead. Go ahead, Sam. I'm sorry. You keep yelling, I'm going to embarrass you. You don't know who I am. Don't cut me off. Listen, you attack the Bible, ahead, I'm going to bury your religion. So, 
chapter 4, verse 24, to show how wicked and evil and immoral your God is, he says to your prophet that married women, <clears throat> married women are unlawful except those whom your right hand possesses. So according to Sunan Abu Dawood, <clears throat> number 2150, your wicked, immoral prophet said, when you take a woman captive who's married, you can rape her and then sell her. It doesn't matter. She's married. So if you want to talk about evil, I will really embarrass your prophet and your wicked God. But on top of that, in chapter 4, verse 24, and chapter 5, verse 87, Surah Al-Maida, according to your hadith, your prophet treated women as whores. He treated them as prostitutes. He called it Zawaj al muta So I'm going to ask you, if a Muslim came to you at the time of your prophet and said, your mother who's not married, I want to do muta with her. I'm going to marry her for three days and pay her money. Would you say, oh yes, alhamdulillah, praise be Allah, brother. This is halal from Allah that you treat my mother as a whore. But that's what your prophet did in the name of your God. So don't ever go to the Bible attack it because I'm going to expose your prophet. But now let's come back to the points. Let me now decimate your points one at a time. One at a time. The reason why I quoted 1 John chapter 4 is because you quoted it. You quoted it to show that Muhammad is a prophet. When 1 John chapter 4 shows that your prophet is an antichrist, a son of the devil, what did you do? Like all Muslims who can't defend their fake prophet, you attack the Bible. So let me now show you what 1 John chapter 4 says again, because you lied to the audience and said, Paul made it up. No, it's the very chapter that you quoted that shows that John, whom you quoted, who now buries Muhammad and destroys your book and shows that your God is a false God, he says in 1 John 4 verse 10, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So John, in the chapter that you quoted, shows God sent his son to die for our sins. So you're stuck with it, and it proves that Muhammad is a son of the devil, whether you like it or not. Now, what about Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 when you said he's a liar? I just showed that your prophet is a liar, and your God is the most wicked deceiver of them all. But let me show you where Paul got this from, because you said you challenge us. Challenge us! Let me read it for you. So just like you took your time and went on tangents, I'm now going to destroy every one of your arguments by the grace of Jesus, Muhammad's God and destroyer. Isaiah 53, written over 700 years before the birth of Jesus. And we have a copy of Isaiah 53 that's about 125 years before Jesus in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and a, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord Jehovah has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth, by oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people, the sin of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. They had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his soul an offering for sin, he will see offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge my righteous servant will justify many. My servant will justify many, and he will bear their sins right in your face, implodes on Muhammad, showing Muhammad is an antichrist. Isaiah says he will bear their sins, therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, transgressors for he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So Isaiah with Paul says, your prophet is a son of the devil, an antichrist, and your God is a false god. Glory to Jesus. And then you slandered Paul, and you said that Paul said my lies, right? Let me now again embarrass you for misquoting Paul. 
Romans 3, verses 7 to 8. Unlike your God who says, Khairun makarim, I have the Arabic lexicons and the context to show makar means your God is a wicked deceiver. So hopefully you don't tap dance because if you're going to get dirty, I'll get dirtier than you. But let me show you what Paul said about the passage you misquoted to your shame and humiliation. Glory to Jesus, he's delivered you into my hands. Glory to Jesus, because you don't know what you're messing with. Romans 3, verses 7 to 8. Someone may, might argue, like you, you slanderer of Paul. Muhammad wasn't even worthy to kiss Paul's sandals. Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? He's saying, someone may say that. Why not say, as some slanderously claim that we say, like you did. Paul just said, you're a lying slanderer, because liars accuse me of saying this, and I don't say this. That's what they accuse me of. So you just got exposed again for shamelessly butchering the Bible, the very Bible that the Quran says you to judge your prophet, and your prophet is condemned as a son of the devil, according to this Bible. Let us do evil that good may result. Their condemnation is just. Now let me show you, Paul, why he's better than your God and, and Muhammad. 2 Corinthians 1.12. Now this is our boast. 2 Corinthians 1.12. Now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world, and especially in our relations with you, with integrity and godly sincerity. Unlike Muhammad, who says his God is the greatest deceiver. Unlike Muhammad, who prostituted women, she didn't like whores calling it Zawaj al Muta. Unlike Muhammad, who take, took married captive women, chapter 4, verse 24, and raped them and sold them, even though their husbands were still alive. Paul condemns Muhammad as a son of the devil. Glory to Jesus Christ, the God of Muhammad. <clears throat> With integrity and godly sincerity, we have done so relying not on worldly wisdom, but on God's grace. So he just called you a liar again, Shuaib. He said, unlike your prophet, we have conducted ourselves with integrity and godly sincerity. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17. Unlike so many, unlike Muhammad, he means, we do not peddle the word of God for a prophet. On the contrary, in Christ we speak before God with sincerity as those sent from God. So he's not like your prophet who used the Quran for money and to whore women and rape them. Glory to Jesus, Paul is no Muhammad. He's better than Muhammad. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. See, he's saying, I am not a Muslim. I'm not like your wicked God and prophet. We renounce secret and shameful ways. Unlike Muhammad, who allowed his companion to murder Kab ibn al-Ashraf using deceit, shameful deceit to murder someone who was mocking your prophet. Thank you, Paul, for being better than Muhammad and his God because you serve the true God, Jesus Christ, Muhammad's God and destroyer. Thank you, Paul. You're a godly example unlike Muhammad. We do not use deception. Wait, wait, wait. What don't you do, Ma Ma uh, Paul? We do not use deception. So wait, Paul, you're saying you're better than Allah and Muhammad? Allah says, I'm the greatest deceiver of them all. Muhammad told Muhammad bin Maslama, you can use deceit to murder Kaab ibn al-Ashraf, murder him. And you're saying you're not like Muhammad, the son of the devil, and Allah his God? Thank you, Paul, for being a holy example of what a true believer in the true God is like. Not Muhammad, who raped women prostituted them, used deceit to murder his enemies, and Allah deceived them in a dream because Allah is not the true God. He is the devil who inspired Muhammad. Thank you, Paul. We love you, Paul. And we will always honor you, unlike Muhammad. Nor do we distort the word of God. Like Muhammad, who distorted the Bible to shame and humiliation, like him, a follower of Muhammad, distorting the Bible to shame and humiliation. You're not like that, Paul? Thank you, Paul. I can't wait to see you in heaven, my brother in Christ. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Now let me call you out again for your bold-faced lie. You said that in the first and second century and the third century, you said that they debated whether they should put the word the Father before God. I'm going to call you out on that lie. Give me the source. Give me the reference because we have it online. Irenaeus says you're a liar. Tertullian says you're a liar. Justin Martyr says you're a liar. Hippolytus, Hippolytus says you're a liar. Novation says you're a liar. You're lying in front of me about church history. Quote the source. It's here. All the church fathers, historical documents are here. Give me the name of the source so I can look it up and show you because I'm going to save it for later. I'm going to quote these men showing you're a liar because they all say that the one God is the Father. The Father is the one God. So don't think you're going to get away with your lies and your deceit. 
It ends for you tonight by the grace of Jesus Christ, Muhammad's God and judge. Finally, and you better answer this. You went through a whole list where Israel's the son of God. Ephraim's the son of God. Adam's the son of God, and you attack straw man. I didn't say being the son of God makes you divine. But I know you had to attack straw man because you are pitiful. You can't refute me. So let me repeat again. The very passages you cited again prove that your prophet is an antichrist because according to Surah Al-Maidah, write this down because you're going to have to defend your Quran because it's about your prophet, not about my Bible. Don't run. We invited you to defend Muhammad, but like a coward, you ran to the Bible, but the Bible will bury your prophet. Chapter 5, verse 18 of the Quran, Shuaim. It says the Jews and the Christians are not the sons of Allah. Chapter 5, verse 18. Chapter 9, verse 30. It says those Jews who say Uzair is the son of Allah and the Christians say this, that Jesus is the son of Allah, Allah will fight them. Chapter 19, verses 88 to 93. There it says the only relationship you can have with your false god is a slave to a master relationship. Thank you for proving to everyone here the Old Testament condemns your prophet as a son of the devil because Israel is the son of God. Ephraim is the son of God and Adam is the son of God. But your prophet says, no, no one's the son of God. So the Old Testament, New Testament condemned your prophet to hell and proves that he's a false prophet. So thank you, Shoei. You're supposed to refute our points and prove Muhammad. You helped me prove Muhammad is an antichrist, son of the devil. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Stick to the topic and I'm warning you. Anytime you attack and mock, I will embarrass you by the grace of Jesus, the God of Muhammad. So behave yourself and be respectful. Address the issue. Don't go on side issues so dave you can control yeah. this all right uh wait yeah one, one second here um uh and yeah no, normally most of, i would say that a, a lot of what sam would have said would have been off topic for the debate but uh dr schwab did bring up all of these issues and so uh had to give sam an opportunity to respond yeah, to those issues um but guys uh we don't want uh we don't want everyone well we don't want two things one we don't want people going on too long during uh during the exchange but we don't want people cutting each other off so uh why don't we agree to some some time constraints are we good yes. kind of going five minutes five minutes would that yes, work five minutes back better. and forth does yeah. that work does yeah. that work dr schwab okay yeah, so so uh, so basically, I'll give uh, uh, you you can have five minutes, and I'll give you a signal saying two minutes left, one minute left, yep. and then wrap up. You don't have to cut right off, but you know, finish your thought, and then we can go back and forth like that again. If you're if you're just tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, we are debating whether Muhammad is a true prophet, and so you can start whenever you're ready. Yeah, Sam is now angry. I don't know why he's angry. I mean, I'm quoting the Bible. You should not get angry. I'm giving you proof. I said. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 5, 3 and 4, it says according to the scriptures. It is not there according to the scripture. You did not quote anything from the scripture. You quote Isaiah 53. The Isaiah 53 doesn't say Christ. Isaiah 53 doesn't speak about coming back to life again. Coming back to life again is not there in your scripture. I'm again and again saying, I'm not saying from my side that he's a liar. Paul is a liar because he said according to the scripture. This is not there in the scripture. John saying they knew not the scripture. This is not there in the scripture. You show me one place when it's, where it says in the Bible that he, the Christ will rise from the dead the third day. Coming back to life, it is not there in the scripture. I gave you proof and you did not touch on that. You did not touch on that. You should, if you, if you, want, if you want to defend, if you want to save Paul, then you should save Paul by giving me quotation from the scripture that this is there in the scripture. It is not there in the scripture. Paul is lying. I can give you many lies, many lies of Paul. Because see, Paul said, you are under grace. Christ will not benefit you. Uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 2 to 4 says, Paul, Jesus will not benefit you. Circumcision will not benefit you. Paul, Paul is crucifying the law. Cursing the law, doing away with the law. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 70 20, Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have not come to destroy but to fulfill. Except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So Paul is saying, No law. Jesus is saying, Keep the law. To the rich person, when he came to say, What good master, what good thing shall I do to enter the kingdom of heaven? Matthew chapter 19, verse number 6 and 17. He says, why callest thou me good? There is none good save one, save God, and that is that is God. 
but if thou shall enter the paradise keep the commandments jesus is asking to keep the commandments paul is saying no law no commandments so jesus christ is saying anyone who breaks one least commandment he will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven anyone who teaches and do so he will be called the great in the kingdom of heaven paul broke all the laws paul broke all the laws what is paul in the sight of jesus he is the most least more worse than the least in the kingdom of heaven i am giving you proof from the bible i am not quoting out out of hand from my side i am not from my stomach no i am not speaking anything from outside i am giving you proof so isaiah 53 doesn't speak about coming back to life isaiah isaiah 53 doesn't speak the word the, doesn't use the word christ also doesn't use the word jesus doesn't use the word christ isaiah chapter 53 verse number 8 speaks about coming back from the prison taking back taking coming back from the prison when was jesus in the prison when was jesus in the prison isaiah 53 verse number 8 says taking back from the prison from the prison brought back from the prison jesus was never in the prison so isaiah 53 doesn't speak about christ you have said about khairul makrin makrin means planning planning so it is not wickedness or you see pa i prove that everyone is a liar matthew is a liar mark is a liar luke is a liar john is a liar paul is a liar you also lying the same way you are the liar also lying about the quran that the quran is speaking about rape where is the word rape in the quran that you should rape the word rape is not there where is there you said that father father was going to the history going to the history between 188 to 100 210 and if you read the book by muhammad uh, ahmed thompson he mentions that in the in his book muhammad the thompson muhammad ahmed thompson he mentioned that book go in, go into the history you will come across you, what you should do you should produce a scripture from the first century and if you if you bring the first century scripture i can show you the word father is not there what you have a scripture from the third fourth century onward word father came into existence later in period after 210 ce the word father was not in you so so you are lying about my quran you are lying about prophet muhammad because you just got angry because i gave proof from the bible that paul is a liar matthew is a liar luke is a liar john is a liar so you are get you are getting angry with that i am giving proof from the bible i am not giving uh, uh, from uh, from my quran i am giving proof from the bible i hope you understand me. all right uh Thank you, Dr. Shweb and uh, Sam. I didn't catch much about Muhammad until the uh, until yeah, the very exactly. end, until the very end there. But uh, to remind everyone, our debate is about whether Muhammad is a prophet, and uh, yeah. Dr. Shweb uh, titled it himself that this is going to be evidences for the prophethood of Muhammad. Sam, you have five minutes to respond. Yes. Yeah, and by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, make sure the next round he focuses on Muhammad, because now I have to refute his rabbit trails and embarrass him further. He just lied to you and said that the word makir, makir means plan or plot. Here it goes. This comes from Lane's Arabic English lexicon. Lane's Arabic English lexicon. Makir. He practiced deceit, guile, circumvention, desiring to do another a foul, an abominable, or an evil action. And then in the same, <clears throat> if you go back and read it, it says to deceive. So again, you're lying in my presence. It means to deceive, to connive, to scheme. Your God is the worst <clears throat> conniver, deceiver known to mankind. He is a liar and deceiver. Live with it. That's what your Quran says. You're stuck with it. Then you said, I lied when I said the Quran says uh, that you rape. Yes, it does. It doesn't have to use the word. Chapter 4, verse 24. Shuaib, are you telling me if you're not a Muslim, but you are, let's say, one of the kuffar, and the Muslims attack your city, they take your wife captive and you're alive. Chapter 4, verse 24, Sunan Abu Dawood, number 2150. They take her and they sleep with her. You're telling me your wife says, oh, that's fine. Go ahead. You just entered my city. You murdered most of the people. My husband is still alive. And I'm so excited to have sex with you. Yay! Because you're the mu'minun. It's not rape. Are you serious? Are you think we're that stupid? Chapter 4, verse 24 says, Your God says, Unlawful for you are married women, except those whom your right hands possess. You go to Sunan Abu Dawood. Sunan Abu Dawood. And it says that this was revealed when the jihadis, the murdering thugs of Allah and Muhammad, 
had attacked the place, took women captive who are married, and your God says, go ahead, sleep with them. That's rape. Ask any woman here. Ask your wife. Ask your daughter. Would they willfully allow their captor to sleep with them? No, that's rape, and they have no say so in the matter. So your God is a rapist, and your prophet sanctioned rape and prostitution. He called it muta. Now I'm going to follow your rabbit trails, because the subject is not about Paul, but the fact you change the subject, glory to Jesus, that means you lost the debate badly. You can't defend Muhammad. Even your God can't defend Muhammad. Glory to Jesus. And this is not anger. This is called passion. I'm passionate for my Lord. If you don't care about Muhammad, I don't blame you. I don't care for him either. You again quote, misquoted Isaiah 53 verse 8. My goodness, in my presence, you're lying to me and you think you're going to get away. Let me read Isaiah 53 verse 8. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Where does it say prison? Yet who of his generation protested? He was cut off from the land of the living. You lied and you said it doesn't say he died. To be cut off from the land of the living means you're dead. And here's further proof. Verse 9. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. But you think we're stupid enough to assume, oh, they're going to bury a live man. A man who's alive, they're going to put him in a grave. And, you know, in his death doesn't mean... We're not stupid. We're not illiterate. We don't follow the son of Muhammad and try to be illiterate. He's cut off from the land of the living. He's going to be buried in a grave and he's in put to death. And then he sees the light of life. Isaiah 53, 10 to 11. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see offspring. How does a man dead, cut off from, from the land of the living, assigned a grave in his death, see offspring because he will see the light of life and be satisfied that's a resurrection whether you like it or not so isaiah condemns your prophet as a son of satan as an antichrist and your god as a false god paul is in perfect agreement with the old testament and then you made the very silly argument well the word messiah is not used if you're going to use that criterion I'm going to challenge you because according to your Quran, chapter 7, verse 157, it says that there is a prophecy of your illiterate, unlettered prophet in the Torah and the gospel that's with them. Show me the word Muhammad in the Bible. Show me the word Mustafa, meaning Muhammad Mustafa ibn Abdullah. If you're going to use that silly argument, you just destroyed your Quran because the Quran says Muhammad is in my Bible, but there's nothing about Muhammad. And I beg you, Please be foolish enough to use Song of Solomon 516 Mahmadin because I'm going to further embarrass you. So I'm asking you, please use it because I'm going to end your apologetics career like Jesus ended the life of Muhammad. Glory to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. How much time I got, Dave? Uh, about, about 10 seconds. Okay, that's it. Make sure he stays on topic because he keeps going to the Bible because he's scared to defend Muhammad. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, all right, Do Doctor uh, Doctor Shweb. Um, just want again remind everyone this is a debate about whether Muhammad is a prophet and the evidences for Muhammad. We have veered off a lot onto Paul, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Whoa. Old Testament prophecies about ma the Messiah and the death of Jesus. Um, Doctor Shweb right now has an opportunity to steer it back onto course and tell everyone who's watching. We have. Uh, almost 2,800 people watching live. Uh, Dr. Schwab now has this opportunity to tell everyone why we should believe that Muhammad is a true prophet, and he gets an opportunity to expand upon his evidences for the prophethood of Muhammad. Okay, okay. See, he said that I lied about Isaiah 53 that he was in a prison. I'm just quote, I'm just reading from the Bible. This is Bible, Indian version Bible. Isaiah chapter 53 verse number eight. He was taken from prison. Prison word is there. He was taken from prison. Can you see here? He was taken from prison. Isaiah chapter 53 verse number 8. He was taken from prison. The word prison is there. I'm not lying. But now you say that I should prove Muhammad as the messenger of God. Let me do that. Let me do that. See, Quran, Alhamdulillah, is a book given by Muhammad, Muhammad praise upon him. It was revealed to Prophet Muhammad and Quran is miraculous. And I can prove to you in five minutes that Quran is miraculous. In Quran, chapter 2, verse number 255. Chapter 2, verse number 255. This is known as Ayat al Kursi. This Ayat al Kursi is one big verse but has nine phrases. 
first one allah la ilaha illallah hayyul qayyum allah there is no god there is no god but he he is al hayyul qayyum two attributes all living and eternal allah la ilaha illallah hayyul qayyum la ta'khudhu sinatan wa lanum he doesn't slumber he doesn't sleep second second phrase there are nine phrases first one is allah la ilaha illallah hayyul qayyum allah there is no god but he all living and eternal second phrase la ta'khudhu sinatan wa lanum he doesn't slumber he doesn't sleep second phrase third phrase lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi lard to him belong whatever is there in the heavens and the earth third phrase fourth phrase man dhal ladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bidni who can intercede in his presence unless he gives permission fifth phrase ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfuhum he knows what is before and what is after them sixth phrase wala yuhituna bi shay'in min ilmihi illa bima sha who can compass in his knowledge unless he gives permission seventh phrase wasiya kursi us samawati wal ard his throne extends over the heavens and the earth eighth phrase wala yaudu hifuhuma he doesn't feel fatigue he doesn't get tired in preserving them ninth phrase wa huwa alil azim he is the most high most supreme now these were the nine phrases now the first one and the ninth one allah la ilaha illallah hayyul qayyum allah there is no god but he al hayyul al qayyum two attributes all living and eternal in the first phrase two attributes all living and eternal in the ninth phrase last uh, last phrase wa huwa alil azim he is the most high most supreme two attributes one and nine they match or not one and nine they match two attributes in the first phrase two attributes in the ninth phrase one and nine they match now second and eighth second phrase says la ta'khudhu sinatan wa lanum he doesn't slumber he doesn't sleep eighth phrase says wala yaudu hifuhuma he doesn't feel fatigue he doesn't get tired in preserving them he doesn't slumber he doesn't sleep he doesn't get tired 2 and 8 also match or not 2 and 8 also match 1 and 9 match 2 and 8 match now 3 and 7 lahu ma fi samawati wal ard to him belong what is there in the heavens and the earth seventh phrase says wa sya kursi us samawati wal ard his throne extends over the over the heavens and the earth so 3 and 7 also match 1 and 9 match 2 and 8 match 3 and 7 match now 4 and 6 man dhal ladhi yashfa'u in dhal bidni who can interfere in his presence unless he gives permission six phrases wala yuhituna bi shay'in min ilmi illa bima sha who can compass in his knowledge unless he gives permission so four and six also match one and nine match two and eight match three and seven match four and six match now the middle one ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa khalfuhum he knows what is before and what is after them who can speak like this can any human being speak like this and i asked this question in south africa to many pastors i asked selvin and nelson from verulam durban i asked bobby freddy from chatsworth durban i asked charles naidu from duff road durban i asked pastor nathan from polokwane limpopo and all of them after explaining aitul kursi this verse like this i asked them pastor tell me can any human being speak like this and most of them all of them they said no human being can speak like this rudal boshoff from johannesburg he said i already believe he was very he was quick enough to say i already believe that quran is inspired i already believe that quran is inspired so pastors and and no human being can dare to say that quran can be spoken like this no human being can speak like this if no human being can speak like this then this proves that this book is from god and this if this book is proof from god then this book is miraculous and prophet muhammad is the true messenger of allah if i come next time i will give you another proof inshallah all right thank you doctor and so sam the argument is that uh that no one can speak like we find here in the quran therefore it must come from god and therefore muhammad must be a true prophet you have five minutes sam Oh. Yeah, uh, real quickly, yeah, Isaiah 53, verse 8. Uh, just let me real quickly deal with that. Okay, the word there, me'oser, me'oser, look at it. It means oppression, oppression. But you have to stick with the King James because you think it makes your point. Even though Jesus was taken by night <clears throat> and stood before the council. But besides that, let's put that aside. You're saying that supposedly this mathematical pattern this mathematical pattern somehow proves that the Quran must be divine in origin. At the most, even if I grant that, it only proves it has a satanic origin because Satan is able to do things that human beings can't do. So thank you for proving that the origin of the Quran is satanic, 
which is why we find patterns that a human being cannot do, but Satan surely can do, because the Bible says that Satan can do signs and wonders to see people, which is why you're deceived. That's number one. Number two, the true sign of the Quran, being the Word of God or not, the true sign. Oh, by the way, side note, we can have a field day with the mathematical patterns of the Bible, like the patterns of the number seven in Genesis chapter one and in the Greek of Matthew. But let's put that aside, because the true sign of a prophethood according to your Quran, the true sign that the Quran is from God or not, is whether we can find many contradictions in it. Chapter 4, verse 82. So let's have a field day with your Quran. Because chapter 4, four verse 82 tells us, this is how you're going to know whether this is from other than Allah. You'll find many contradictions. So I'm going to challenge you where, you where you can show me in the Quran, it says, hey, mathematical patterns is a proof of the Quran. You're coming up with your own arbitrary <clears throat> criterion. I'm going to now force you to stick to your Quran. Your Quran says that this is how you're going to know this is from Allah or not. That if you find many discrepancies. Discrepancy number one, chapter 17, verse 1. So let's have a field day. Chapter 17, verse 1. Glory to Allah, or glory be to him, who took his servant for a journey by night from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque, whose precincts we did bless, in order that we might show some, him some of our signs. For he is the one who heareth and seeth. Number one, the Quran repeatedly says, I want to give you these verses, Shoaib, write them down, and you better address my objection. Write them down. If you go to chapter 6, verse 114 of the Quran. If you go to chapter 16, verse 89 of the Quran. And if you go to chapter 41, verse 3 of the Quran. Just three of many verses. It says that the Quran is clear, it provides a full explanation of all things in the book, and it provides a detailed explanation of all of its verses. And I can give you more. So here's my challenge to you. Chapter 17, verse 1 says, Glory be to him who took his servant for a journey by night. Show me from the verse who the servant was. If you tell me, Muhammad, where does the verse say that? That's number one. Number two, it says he was taken from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque. From the verse... From the book that says it explains all things in detail and there are no contradictions. Show me from the verse what the sacred mosque is, where it is, and how do you know from the verse, and what the farthest mosque is. That's my second challenge. My third challenge, the moment you go outside of the Quran, you're going to get embarrassed. Because number one, if you go outside of the Quran, then that means the Quran is a lie from hell. It doesn't explain all of its verses because many of its verses are vague, unclear, ambiguous. You don't know what it means and you need the Hadith. And the moment you go outside to the Hadith, you will destroy the Quran because according to your sources, according to your sources, Masjid al-Aqsa was the temple in Jerusalem. Shoaib, I want you now explain to everyone, how did your prophet go to a fantasy temple that did not exist in Jerusalem because <clears throat> Beitun Maqdas? The temple of Aliyah was destroyed in 70 AD. There was no temple for him to visit. So I beg you, go outside of the Quran so we can destroy the Quran because this imaginary temple did not exist. Another challenge for you. If you go to chapter 111 of the Quran, chapter 111 of the Quran, it says, perish be Abu Lahab, perish him and his wife. From the Quran, Shuei, show me who Abu Lahab is. From the Quran, why is Allah cursing Abu Lahib and why is he cursing his wife? The moment you go outside of the Quran, you bury the Quran. Because let me remind you of the verses. Chapter 6, verse 114. Chapter 16, verse 89. Chapter 41, verse 3. It says, this book is fully detailed. It explains everything in detail. It even explains its verses in detail. So if the Quran is right, the Quran will provide the explanation. But the moment you go outside the Quran, you bury the Quran, you destroy Muhammad's prophethood, and you show the Quran is a lie from the pit of hell. Answer my questions from the Quran, because I got more contradictions for you. We're going to have a field day tonight, Shuaib. Make sure you answer my objections. Go ahead, your time. All right, let me reset and, my, let me, uh, one second, let me just reset my timer. And uh, so, Dr., for, for everyone who's tuning in, uh, because I keep seeing we get more and more people, for everyone who's tuning in, Dr. Uh, Shweb made a case for the divine origin of the Quran, which would make Muhammad was a, which would make Muhammad a prophet. And then Sam responded by arguing that the Quran is not from God. And now, uh, Dr. Shweb will have five minutes. 
all the pastors i asked this question can any human being speak like this all the pastors they say no human being can speak none of them they said that it could be from satan no this person has said that this is from satan this cannot be from satan because quran is speaking against the satan in chapter 16 verse number 88 verse number 98 for why the karat al quran of asta is billah min shaitan if you read quran seek refuge from satan the accursed quran is against satan in chapter 5 verse number 90 in ya ayyuhal ladina amanu inna mal khamra wal maisra wal ansab wal azlam wa rijfum min amal shaitan oh you believe in toxicants and gambling and dedication of son a satan's handiwork shun such a abomination that you may prosper if it is of if it was if it was from satan then it should say the intoxicants and gambling and dedication of stones are good thing o oh, people practice all these things that you may prosper more no quran is speaking against the satan and mark chapter 3 verse number 23 24 says that if you are, if the kingdom if the kingdom of satan is against itself the kingdom will fall if satan is against himself the kingdom will fall so satan cannot speak against itself so you are lying again about the quran you're lying about the quran is contradicting quran is not contradict quran is a miraculous in that aspect also chapter 4 verse number 82 if i time permits i can uh, along it now you say that this is a contradiction chapter 17 verse number 1 and other verses which is which says clear it is a contradiction no it is not a contradiction contradiction means that if the verse says that he took from from the sacred mosque to the father's mosque then you should show me that he did not take from the sacred mosque to the father's mosque The, this is how you should show the contradiction this is not a contradiction so you should understand what is contradiction now you are lying about the quran you are lying about muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and let me give you another proof in is in sulay al imran chapter 3 verse number 59 inna masla isa in the allah ka masla adama khalaqahu min turabin thumma qala lahu kun fayakun the similitude of jesus in the sight of god is just like adam he created adam from dust and he said and he be and he was now how many times the phrase says that jesus is like adam jesus is like adam how many times jesus by name he's mentioned in the full quran he is mentioned by name 25 times jesus christ by name he is mentioned in the full quran 25 times you can take the help of concordance you can count it that he's mentioned 25 times how many times adam peace upon him he is mentioned in the full quran adam peace upon him is also mentioned 25 times jesus christ is mentioned 25 times adam peace upon him is also mentioned 25 times is this not amazing this is amazing and quran was not revealed in numbers it was not revealed with the ayat numbers now this was in chapter 3 verse number 59 there are 351 verses before this verse chapter 3 verse number 59 in the quran In these 351 verses, how many times Jesus is mentioned previously? First time Jesus is mentioned in chapter 2, verse number 87. Second time he is mentioned chapter 2, verse number 136. Third time he is mentioned chapter 2, verse number 1253. Third, fourth time he is mentioned chapter 3, verse number 1445. Fifth time he is mentioned chapter 3, verse number 52. Sixth time he is mentioned chapter 3, verse number 55. Seventh time he is mentioned chapter 3, verse number 59. So six times he is mentioned previously. Seventh time in chapter three verse number fifteen and seventh time, how many times Adam is mentioned in chapter three verse number fifteen nine? In in the masala Isa ka masala Adama Adama is mentioned in chapter three verse number fifteen nine. How many times Adam is mentioned previously in these three hundred fifty one verses? Adam is also mentioned in chapter two verse number thirty one first time, chapter two verse number thirty three second, chapter two verse number thirty four third, chapter two verse number thirty five fourth time, chapter two verse number thirty seven fifth time. Chapter six, chapter three, verse number thirty-three, six times, and seventh time Adam is also mentioned seventh time. Is it not amazing? Jesus Christ is mentioned seventh time in chapter three, verse number fifty-nine. Adam is also mentioned seventh time in chapter three, verse number fifty-nine. This is amazing. Who can author a book like this? Another one. In, if you count Jesus Christ in the concordance, how many times he's mentioned? He's mentioned twenty. And if you count like that, you will come across. that he is mentioned 19th time in surah 19 surah maryam 19th surah in 19th time in surah maryam surah 19 19th time this is amazing by itself now how many times adam is mentioned adam is also mentioned 19th time in the 19th surah surah maryam this is amazing who can author book like this satan cannot author book like this satan is not speaking against itself 
Satan is say Satan is job is to spread evil. Quran is not spreading evil. So who can author book like this? If the it proves that Quran is from God, nobody can author book like this. Then this is from God. If this is from God, then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the true prophet of God. Uh, thank you, Doctor Shweb. Um... Sam, he went about 15 to 20 seconds over, so if you need sure. an extra, uh, just, just, keep in, yeah. just keeping things fair. All right, Sam, you have right. five minutes. Go ahead. Notice what he said. He goes that Satan can't be author of the, the Quran because the Quran condemns Satan. Guys, I want you to congratulate him. He just proved Paul is a true apostle of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because Paul condemns Satan. He just proved that Joseph Smith is a true prophet of God. You know why? Because Joseph Smith also condemns Satan. He also proved that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed must be a true prophet of Allah and the Indian Messiah because he too condemns Satan. This shows his ignorance because he doesn't understand that 2 Corinthians 11 verses 13 and 15 says that Satan can masquerade as an angel of light. So Satan can appear to a false prophet, deceive him into thinking that he is a righteous spirit and have him attack a false Satan. The saint of the Quran is not the true Satan. You know how I know? Because the saint of the Quran is a genie named Iblis. So here, Satan, smarter than Muhammad, smarter than Shu'ayb, deceived Muhammad into thinking that Iblis is actually him. So he's seeking refuge with Allah from a fake Satan because that's the brilliance of Satan. He appears as an angel of light to deceive you. But according to your criteria, you prove Paul is a true apostle because Paul condemns Satan. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 5, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3, 1 Corinthians 11 verses 2 to 4 and 13 15. So, but Paul contradicts Muhammad. That means Muhammad must be a son of Satan because Paul who condemns Satan wouldn't be used of Satan and must be a true messenger. You ended up proving too much. So my point stands. What you're showing me is nothing more than satanic miracles inspired by a satanic prophet to deceive people like you into hell by thinking these are miracles from the true God. But let's go back to the point. You didn't address it. Chapter 17 verse 1 is a contradiction if you heard me correctly. So let me repeat my point, Shuaib. Don't tap dance because I'm not going to let you run. In 17 verse 1 it says, Glorified be he who took his servant by night from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque. In the Quran it says, the Quran is a book that explains all things in detail. Chapter 6 verse 114. Chapter 12, verse 111, even chapter 10, verse 37, I add more verses. Chapter 16, verse 89, chapter 41, verse 3. If the Quran fails to provide details, that means the Quran is a lie. It is full of errors. You need to now destroy the Quran because it fails its own test. So I'm going to ask you again. Provide the details from the Quran. What is the sacred mosque? What's the farthest mosque? And who is this servant? You have to show me from the Quran. And then explain to me in chapter Surah, verse 111, who is Abu Lahab? You have to show me from the Quran. If not, then your Quran is full of errors. It's full of holes. It's full of contradictions. Stop being a Muslim. And then on top of that, you said, well, the Quran condemns intoxicants. It's a work of Satan. Guys, I want you to thank Shuaib again. He proved Allah is Satan. Do you know why? Guess what? He's going to be drinking in paradise. He's going to be drinking intoxicants such as wine. And he just told you that intoxicants are the work of the devil. Why does your God, Allah, have the work of the devil as your reward in paradise if your God, Allah, is not the devil? Chapter 5 of the Quran, verses 90 to 91. So thank you, Shuaib, for now further proving that Allah is the devil who appeared to Muhammad to deceive him into thinking he's a true prophet. Now let's use chapter 3, verse 59 to destroy Islam. I, I can't believe you used 359 because 359 shows that the author Quran has to be the devil because that is the worst example you can give that Adam's like Jesus. So here's my challenge to you. Number one, show me where the Quran says, like Jesus, Adam is kalimatuhu. <clears throat> El qaha illa Maryam. Chapter 4, verse 171. That Adam is the word of Allah sent down to Maryam. Show me in the Quran where Adam is said to be Ruchin Minhu, chapter 4, verse 171 of the Quran. Show me in the Quran where Adam raised the dead, gave life to the dead, created from clay a bird, and breathed into it life the way Jesus did, who did it exactly like your God did in creating Adam. Show me Adam doing that. Fifthly, show me where Adam is sinless like Jesus is. Sixthly, show me again 
why is it that Jesus is born from a virgin when he didn't have to be born from a virgin, whereas Adam is the first man? Being the first man, he couldn't have parents. So he had to be born from the dust or whatever way, so he couldn't have parents because he's the first man. But Jesus, on the other hand, didn't have to be born of a virgin. Why was he born of a virgin but Adam wasn't? And then moreover, here's what I want you to show me. I want you to show me where the Quran says that Allah took Adam to himself like Allah took Jesus to himself in chapter 3, verse 55, and chapter 4, verse 171, I'm sorry, 4, 158. 4, 158, 355, 4, 158. Show me how Adam is exactly like Jesus when he's so unlike Jesus. And Jesus is better than Adam and better than your prophet Muhammad. And seventhly, show me where anything is said about anyone's wife or mother that they're the greatest woman that God created, like is said about Jesus' mother in chapter 3, verse 42, and explain to everyone why is it that Jesus' mother is the only woman mentioned by name, not even the wives of your prophet or the mother of your prophet are mentioned. In fact, the hadith in Sahih Muslim says, the mother of your prophet is burning in hell. Damn. So that ex actually proof shows that Adam's not like Jesus. Go ahead. All right, uh, Dr. Dr. Shuaib, uh, I gave Sam about an extra 15 to 20 seconds because you went a little bit over, but then he went 30 seconds beyond that very rudely. And so uh, you can have uh, about 30 seconds extra uh, as you respond here. Okay, Mark chapter 3, verse number 23. Yeah. See, you should you are now against the Bible also. Mark chapter two, 3, verse number 23, 24. And if a kingdom, if divide, how can Satan cast out Satan? If the and if a kingdom is divided, be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against his, himself, and he divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. And no, a certain kingdom is not an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his food, except he will first behind the strong man and then. So, if if a house is divided against itself. The house cannot stand. If Satan is speaking against itself, he, it cannot stand. So this cannot be from Satan. Now you are showing, you are telling me, show me from the Quran where it, it, it is in detail. Show me from the Quran where it, it is in detail. Quran mentions in chapter 16, verse number 43. Fas alu ahli dikri in kuntum la talamun. Fas alu ahli dikri in kuntum la talamun. Ask the people who know if you don't know. Ask the people who know, if you don't know, if you want to know anything, ask the expert. This is the guidance from the Quran. So Quran is giving you guidance to know everything, everything in detail. Now he's saying that, show me who was Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab, when the revelation was given, everybody knew who is Abu Lahab. Who is Abu Lahab? Abu Lahab was the uncle of Prophet Muhammad. He was the avowed enemy of Prophet Muhammad. Wherever he went, he, he spoke against the Prophet Muhammad. Wherever Prophet Muhammad went and stood there and he said, Oh people, this is like this. This is day. So Abu Lahab will stand in the same place. He will say, No, this is night. Oh people, this is night. If Prophet Muhammad said that this is night, he will say, No, this is day. So he was speaking against Prophet Muhammad every time. So now, the revelation comes that Abu Lahab will be thrown into hellfire, meaning Abu Lahab will not become a Muslim. Now tell me, how can a human being like Muhammad can make a statement that this person will not be a Muslim? He will be thrown into hellfire, he will not be a Muslim. And to become a Muslim, he has to just recite the Kalima, Shahada, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa shahaduna Muhammadun abdu rasulu. Now this person, he was against Prophet Muhammad. He was about enemy of Prophet Muhammad. The best thing to do for him was to say, Oh Muhammad, this Quran is claiming that I am to be, I'll be thrown into hellfire. I will not be a, I will not be a Muslim. Here I am. I recite the Shahada, and Quran would have been full proof false. But no, he would lived for ten years after that revelation. He lived ten years after that revelation. He did not become Muslim. He died on shirk. He died on sh politism. He is in hell. He will be in a hellfire. So how can a human being like Prophet Muhammad make a statement that this person will not become a Muslim? How can he have a control on his tongue? How, and how much time you require to read the Shahada? It requires just 10 seconds. He just requires 10 seconds. He got 10 years of life. 
10 years of life, he did not recite the Shahada. This shows that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the Prophet of God, it's the revelation from God, this, uh, this is from revelation of God. No human being can make a statement that this person will not utter these words when you know that this person is against himself. How can a person make a statement like that? And at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the whole of Arabia gradually, they are all becoming Muslim. One by one, in a, in a group by group, they are all gradually becoming Muslim. Only few people became Mushrik, few people died on Shirk. So now, only few people became Mushrik. How can Prophet Muhammad as a human being make a statement that this person will not become a Muslim? It has to be from God. I quoted this again to a missionary here, and this missionary also spoke like this. He was baffled. He could not know what to say. No, no, no. Then he had to say, no, this could be from Satan. This could be from Satan. Are, this cannot be from Satan. Satan cannot speak ag against itself. Quran is speaking against Satan. So this cannot be from Satan. This is from God. Now you have to say this is from Satan because if you say that this is from God, then you will have to become Muslim. You have to read the Shahada. And you don't want to read the Shahada. You don't want to become Muslim. Your heart is, is uh, as if it, it seems that it is sealed. Khatam Allah wala khulubi. Is it? I don't, I'm not saying it is sealed. It, it seems like that. So if you read the Shahada, you become Muslim, but you don't want to read the Shahada, you have to deny, you have to say that this is from Satan. You have no choice. You, 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 have, you, have, you still have 30 seconds if you want it. No, uh, you, okay. you're making the sign the, the, that... Oh yeah, that no, I meant that was the original five minutes, but you could, have, you could go a little oh, longer. Okay, if, you want, okay, if you want 30 okay, seconds, no, you can no, take... No. You're good? No, he can, he can take okay. 30 seconds. Okay, well, thank no. you. All right, no, you're not getting an extra 30 seconds there. All right, <laughs> let me know when to begin. Uh, good. Okay, first of all, thank you for again proving the Quran is full of contradictions. Guys, I want you to hear, he misquoted chapter 16, verse 43. But let's go with his interpretation. He said at 1643, ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. But hold on, if that's correct, that the Quran is saying, go ask other people besides the Quran, you just destroyed the Quran and you helped me prove the Quran is not from your God because you just introduced another contradiction. Good job, Shuayib, because now let me read to you chapter 12, verse 111. Indeed, in their stories, there's a lesson for men of understanding. It, the Quran, is not a fourth statement, but a confirmation of Allah's existing books and a detailed explanation of everything and a guide and a mercy for the people believe. A detailed explanation of everything, not some things, everything. And in, in case you still don't get it, chapter 41, verse 3, a book whereof the verses are explained in detail. But thank you for now introducing another contradiction. Because one verse says, ask people who know, so you need more than the Quran. But these verses say, no, all you need is the Quran. Thank you for destroying the Quran. But I thought you were trying to prove that the Quran is the word of Allah. But you are helping me prove it is a false book. Thank you. Glory to Jesus Christ. I appreciate it. Then you again, you deceive the people. You lied to the people. You said that Surah 111 says, Abu Lahab will never become a Muslim. I'm going to challenge you in front of everyone. Show me in Surah 111 where it says Abu Lahab won't be a Muslim. It says he'll perish in hell, but it never said he won't be a Muslim. Because according to your Quran, Shuaib, everyone goes to hell, even your prophet. Chapter 19, verses 71 to 72. There is not one of you who will not enter into it. Into where? Hell. This is with your Lord a decree which must be accomplished. Then we shall save those who used to fear Allah and were dutiful to him. So all you're proving is that Abu Lahab and everyone else goes to hell and your prophet is in hell according to this verse. And please don't tell me the Arabic doesn't mean he went to hell. So I'm going to challenge you and I'm going to call you on front of everyone. Show me in Surah 111, Abu Lahab will not become Muslim. Let's go back to the original point. The Quran says it is a book that explains everything. The fact you went to that deed, you buried the Quran. Because you said Abu Lahab was Muhammad's uncle. Show me from the chapter. When you go to the Hadith, game over for your prophet. Show me from the chapter. Quran says it explains everything. Show me where it says it's his uncle. You still didn't answer chapter 17, verse 1. Show me in chapter 17, verse 1, who is the servant, what is the sacred mosque, and what is the father's mosque. The moment you go out of that Hadith, you destroy the Quran. And finally, chapter 16, verse 43, you misquoted it because it's not talking about anything other than go ask the people of the book because Ahl al-Dhikr, go read your Mufassirun. It's saying if you doubt that Allah sends men as apostles, 
Ask Ahl al-Dhikr, the people who've been reading the Bible. That's why even in Tafsir Jalalain, it means the people read the Torah and the Gospel. You twisted it to make it say something it doesn't. But now let's come back to Mark 3. I don't understand why would you go to Mark 3, because you quoted Mark 3 to say that Jesus said that if Satan's kingdom is divided, it cannot stand. Jesus is talking about the true devil fighting himself in his own kingdom. He's not talking about Satan deceiving someone like Muhammad and attacking a false devil. And I'm going to prove to you that Iblis of the Quran is a false devil, so that it was Satan who inspired your prophet, so that Allah is actually Satan, not the true God. Because let's read Mark 3 in context, Shuey. The same chapter, my brother in humanity. Mark 3, 10 to 12. For he had healed many, so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the impure spirit saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But wait, the, the God of Muhammad, Allah said, Jesus is not my son, I'm not his father. But Jesus here in Mark 3, which you quoted, Shu'ab, the even evil spirits knew this is the Son of God worthy of their worship. So Mark 3 proves that Iblis of the Quran is a fake Satan because the real Satan appeared to your prophet as Allah and deceived him into thinking he's fighting the real Satan when he's fighting a counterfeit because the real Satan knows Jesus son of God and if he's going to deceive people he's going to deceive them into thinking Jesus is not the son of God and that's where your prophet comes in the son of the devil who denied Jesus son of God and the same mark what does the father say about Jesus mark 9 7 same mark you quoted thank you Shalev. you're making my job easier to prove Muhammad is a child of the devil and the Quran is alive from the pit of hell mark 9 verse 7 then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. So according to your prophet, Allah is not the father of Jesus. Muhammad didn't believe Jesus, son of God. Therefore, Allah is Satan, who inspired Muhammad into attacking a fake devil, because the true God, his true son is Jesus, whom he loves, and he commands someone like you to follow his son, not Muhammad, the agent of the devil. Game over, Shuaib. It's over for you, as it's over for Muhammad. Glory to Jesus, Muhammad's God and judge. All right, uh, Sh Dr. Shuaib, uh, Sam went 23 seconds over. Uh, we're going to, we need to start winding down because it is uh, 1037 here. So we've been going, um, uh, getting close to two hours. So what we're going to do is to start winding down is uh, we're going to go four minutes, four minutes, three minutes, three minutes, two minutes, two minutes. One minute, one minute, and then since Dr. Shuaib is our guest, I'm going to give him an additional minute at the end to uh, to, yes, clo right. to close out since he's and our by guest. By the way, David, What's do up? me a favor. Let me know. Say, hey, 10 seconds because I'm not watching you. I'm not seeing the screen. That's why I'm not seeing okay. your hands. Okay, I'll blurt it out. Just say 10 seconds so okay. I don't go over because I don't want to go over. I want to stay within time. Okay, Dr. Shuaib, you have uh, four minutes, but you have about an extra 25 seconds because Sam once again rudely went over. So when you see me, when you see me hold my hand up, that means four minutes, but you can still take an extra 20 to 25 seconds. Yes, Quran chapter 16 verse number 43. First, Allah Ahle Zikri in Kuntum La Talamun. If you realize this, not ask of those who possess the knowledge. It doesn't say ask the people of the book. It says, if you do not know, ask of those who possess the knowledge. Anyone who possess the knowledge, it doesn't say people of the book. You are lying. Again, you are lying about Quran. Quran is not saying ask the people of the book, ask the Jews and Christians. Quran is saying who possess the knowledge so quran is speaking about anyone if you want to if you want to know anything you ask the people of knowledge in detail you ask him in detail you'll get all the details in detail so quran is not contradicting quran is not contradicting quran says in chapter 4 verse 82 there is no contradiction in the quran and people try to remove contradictions but everywhere you will find this is no there is no contradiction there is explanation for everything now Again, a proof that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was a true messenger of God and Quran is a miraculous book from God. Chapter 6, verse number 125. Chapter 6, verse number 125. What it says? It says, For my yurid Allah an yahdiyo. Those whom Allah in his plan will, will it to guide. Yashra sadrahu lil Islam. He openeth their breast to Islam. Waman yurid an yufle lahu yaj'al sadrahu zayyakan harjan kanama yaf'adu fi sama. Those whom Allah in his plan will it to guide 
he opened the breast in Islam. Those whom he willed to leave straying, he make it the breast closed. He make it the breast closed and constricted as if they had to climb up the skies, as if they have to climb up to the skies. Now, Quran is saying that if he will it to leave straying, he make it the breast closed, constricted, as if they had to climb up to the skies. Now, how can Muhammad know that if you go up the sky, climb up the sky, there will be constriction of your chest. You find difficulty in breathing. Your breast will be closed. You are constricted because you know if you go higher and higher, the pressure of air falls down. If the pressure is down, lower pressure, the air from inside, it will try to go out and it will be constricted and you will find difficulty in breathing. So higher, the, higher you go, you need a oxygen to survive. So how can Quran make a statement 1400 years ago like this? which proves, which confirms this today. It is miraculous. Again, Quran is miraculous. Now, Bible is a 10 times bigger than this book. It has more potential to speak about these things, pressed and, and the, but nowhere Bible mentions these things. Quran mentions this and Quran, Alhamdulillah, again proves that this is from God. And if it, if it is from God, that this is from Prophet Muhammad. And if it is from Prophet Muhammad, proving that it is from God, then Prophet Muhammad is the true messenger of God. Quran is Alhamdulillah without any contradiction. It proves, gives you proofs after proofs that Quran is from God. And Alhamdulillah, if you give me time enough, I can, whole day I can speak about on Quran, proving you that Quran is the word of God from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Quran is not from Satan. It cannot be from Satan. It is from God. It is from God. So Alhamdulillah, Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, Sam, uh, Dr. Shway finished up a few seconds early, but uh, you have four minutes, sir. Okay, uh, because my time is fleeting real quickly. He just told me that I lied about 1643. Here you go, Tafsir al-Jalalin, Tafsir al-Jalalin. And we did not send before you anything other than men to whom we revealed and sent, not angels. So ask the followers of the remembrance, Ahl al-Dhikr, those knowledgeable in the Torah and the Gospels, if you do not know. So you're the liar. I'm quoting your Muslim scholars. In case you don't like Tafsir Janani, here is Tanwir al-Mikbas min Tafsir ibn Abbas. Tafsir ibn Abbas. Watch here. And we sent not as our messengers before the O Muhammad other than men, human beings like you whom we inspired with commands and prohibitions and signs, ask the followers of the remembrance, the followers of the Torah and the gospel. Shuaib, you got busted again. You're either ignorant of your sources or you're lying. I'll be charitable and say you're ignorant, so I'm educating you about your deen. It is talking about the Jews and Christians, Ahl al-Dhikr, according to the Mufassirun. And you talk about, how did Muhammad know that if you go to the skies, your, your chest will be constricted? I think, Shuaib, you forgot the fact that your prophet used to go onto high mountains. And anyone who's gone mountain climbing can realize the higher you go, the more constricted you feel. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. But now let's turn it against you. Since you're going to science, let me show you how science destroys the Quran. Chapter 86, verses 6 to 7. Chapter 86, verses 6 to 7. He is created from a water gushing forth, proceeding between the backbone and the ribs. He is created from a water gushing forth, proceeding from the uh, from between the backbone and the ribs. We know that's not where spur comes, but you know what? Let's go to the commentators. Let's see what they said. The response is he was created from a gushing fluid, gushing forth from the man and the woman into the womb. Unfortunately for you, your prophet being ignorant, he actually thought that women had sperm that contributed to the formation of the embryo. Here it is. Let me show you. This comes from... <clears throat> Sunan Nasai, it's Sahih, great it's Sahih. It was narrated that Anas said, the Messenger of Allah said, the man's water is thick and white, and the woman's water is thin and yellow. Whichever of them comes first, the child will resemble that parent. You're a medical doctor. I challenge you to show me a reputable medical source that says that a child will resemble the mother's side if the mother has an orgasm, and then she releases her yellow fluid first, 
or will resemble the father's side. If the father has an orgasm, science says your prophet is busted because orgasms have nothing to do with the way you look. So thank you for appealing to science because it destroyed the Quran and Muhammad. Jesus is Lord and Muhammad is under the feet of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm done, buddy. All right. Uh, Sam actually finished a, a minute early, uh, Dr. Shui, but uh, now you have three minutes and then Sam will have three minutes. The Quran, Alhamdulillah, proved to be the from God, Alhamdulillah. There is no doubt in that. And I can give you proof after proof from the Quran that it is from God, Alhamdulillah. So he says that Quran is from not God. It is not true. What I what he should do, whatever I quoted from my present in the presentation, the G, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when he was a child, how can he be without sin? When everyone was sinning at that time, everyone was sinning. It was Ayyamul Jahiliya, days of ignorance. How can a human, a often child from eight years old, ten years old, twenty years old, he's without any sin? So how is it possible? This is amazing. Everyone was drunkard, in by big alcohol. He was drunkard. Prophet Muhammad, as a child, he grew up eight years, ten years, twenty years, to thirty years. Not a single drop of alcohol in his mouth. How is it possible? It is just impossible. It is no less than a miracle. It is a miraculous thing. Prophet Muhammad, at his time, people used to worship idols. Prophet Muhammad, as a child, would, should copy the same thing. But no, never. He did not bow down to idols. How is it possible? It has to be from God. Let no less than a miracle. He did not speak a single lie all his life for 40 years. How can he lie after that? How can he lie after that? For 40 years, he did not speak a single lie to educate to benefit himself. How can he lie after that? If he did not speak for 40 years any lie, he will not speak a lie after that also. <laughs> when he said that he is the prophet of God, he was speaking the truth. When he said that angel Gabriel visits him, he was speaking the truth. When he said that Quran is revealed to him, he was speaking the truth. When he spoke everything, uh, he was speaking the truth. He was an, uh, So this proves that he is the true messenger of God. I gave him proof after proof that Quran, that Prophet Muhammad is the true messenger of Allah. And Quran is a book of... And if you go to the mountain, you don't feel constriction. If you go to that mountain, that much height, it won't be... If you climb an Everest mountain, the biggest mountain, then you feel constriction. Prophet Muhammad did not climb the Everest mountain. He just come to climb the, that Safa, uh, that uh, Garahira. He, he did not climb the highest mountain. <laughs> that much mountain, you don't feel constriction. If he, were, if he used to feel constriction, he would not go there. Why he should go there without oxygen? He went to there without oxygen. He did not go with oxygen on the top of the mountain. He did not go with the oxygen. He, uh, he went without that. So he was not feeling the constriction that time. Constriction you feel if you climb Everest mountain, higher, higher go in that way. So Alhamdulillah, Quran is not contradicting Prophet Muhammad is the true messenger of Allah. See, read the biography of Prophet Muhammad. Read the biography of Prophet Muhammad. You will come across several instances, several proofs that he is the genuine prophet of God. And every every incident, every incident, if you read with this intention to know how he is the true messenger of Allah, you will be definitely be convinced that he is a true messenger. But you have to be just sincere. If you are not sincere, then you will not be guided. You will not be guided. Allah guides those who turn towards him, who are sincere in their, in their heart. Allah guides those people. Yahdi my Yunib. Allah guides to those people who turn towards him. All right. Um... Dr. Shuev, you went a little over 30 seconds over, but I'm going to count you guys even since Sam went uh, Sam went over earlier, so no extra time on this one, Sam. But Sam, you have uh, yeah, you have one second. And here's here's the thing. Before you start time, maybe make this my last round, and then he can conclude with closing statements and Q and A if you want. I'll make this my last round. How about that? What uh, do you think? Because it's already like close to it's a. Uh, Whatever. So should I make this my last rebuttal? Then you give him closing statements, or uh, do you want to do no, more rebuttals? Yeah, do, 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 do your three minutes, and then we can go closing statements. I don't know if we want okay. to do... Uh, he can, he can make the final statement. Yeah. I'll yeah. just make this okay. my final one. Okay, All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Uh, he said that Muhammad from childhood avoided idolatry. No, he didn't. Here it is. This comes from Ibn Ishaq. Ibn Ishaq, 
This is from Ibn Ishaq. This is from Alfred Guillaume, Islam, pages 26, 27. I was told that the Apostle of Allah said, he was talking about Zayd. He was the first to braid me for idolatry. He was the first. Guys, Muhammad. He, Zayd, Ibn Amr, was the first to rebuke me for idolatry and forbid me to worship idols. Why? Because it goes on to say that I sat down with him. I had a bag containing meat, which we had sacrificed to our idols. That's Muhammad speaking. He was with, and then with Zayd ibn Hadith that was carrying it. Zayd ibn Amr rebuked him. I don't eat food sacrificed to idols. So he selectively cites those sources that agree with him. So if you read the Sirah, Muhammad was an idolater who sacrificed to the idols until Zayd ibn Amr rebuked him. Moreover, he's still an idolater because ask Shu'aib to explain to you why do Muslims smother, kiss, caress a black stone? That black stone was one of the stones that the pagans would venerate and then Muhammad would kiss it, smother it, touch it and weep on it to the point that Amar ibn al-Khattab said, I know you're a stone that neither harms nor benefits. Had I not seen the messenger of Allah do it, I would not have done it. He didn't even know why my prophet is smooching a black stone like a pagan. All because it's come from Abraham. No, it doesn't. Leviticus 26 verse 1 says that the God of Abraham will not allow you to take a stone and smother it and kiss it like a pagan. So you're wrong. Your prophet was a pagan and died a pagan. But then you say your prophet was a man of integrity. What sources are you reading? Sayyid Bukhari, volume 5, number 369. Allah's apostle said, who is going to kill Kaab ibn al-Ashraf, who has hurt Allah and his apostle? Muhammad bin Maslama said, oh Allah's apostle, I will kill him. The prophet said, yes. But Maslama said, allow me to use deceit to deceive Kaab. You may do it. Wow, your prophet, a man of integrity who doesn't lie, ordered his companions to murder someone and use lie and trickery to, re to murder him. What are you talking about? Where did you get that your prophet is a man of integrity? He was a murderer and a liar and a deceiver according to your sources. And then it gets worse for you. Because over here, when you go to Sayyid Bukhari, <clears throat> let me get it here. Volume 7, number 427. This is what your prophet said. If I take an oath and later find something better than that, then I do what is better and expiate my mouth. So here your prophet saying he's a bold-faced liar. He'll give you his word, but if he sees something better, seconds. you know what? I, I cancel my oath and I'm going to do something better. Your sources condemn your prophet as an idolater and a liar. Case closed. Islam is over. Jesus is Lord. I'm done. One second, one second, one second, Shuaib. Uh, Sam has Sam has said that that's his final that that's his final uh, statement. So I'm going to give you. Uh, we were going to go two two, then one one, but I'll just give you two minutes to conclude uh, your to conclude. No, Islam is not over. Islam is always uh, increasing, and it will be overcoming everyone. You said that we smothered the black stone. Black stone, we don't worship. Anybody worships anything. If you worship anything, he will be proud to say that I'm worshiping this thing. I know Hindus here, they are worshiping insignificant stones. A piece of stone they worship in Hindus here. If you ask this Hindu, do you worship this stone? He will be proud to say that I worship this stone because he believes that this stone is his God. So he will be proud to say. No Muslim, no Muslim in the world will say that we worship the black stone. No Muslim will admit that. We don't worship the black stone. We worship Allah. We worship Allah. What is worship? Worship means obedience to Allah. Whatever Allah says, whatever Allah says, you do willing for obedience. If Allah commands you to follow the Prophet, following the Prophet and smothering, then this is worship. So you're worshipping Allah. You're not worshipping the stone. Allah commanded the angels to bow down to Adam. Allah commanded the angels to bow down to Adam. The angels, they were not worshipping Adam. They were worshipping Allah because they were obeying Allah. Obedience to Allah, obedience to Allah is worship. So obedience to Allah is worship. Allah is commanding to obey the Prophet. Uh, we are following Allah. We are obeying Allah. So this is worship of Allah. We are not worshipping stone. We are not worshipping black stone. Anybody who worships anything, he will be proud to say that I'm worshipping that. No Muslim will ever say that we are, I'm worshipping this stone. Nobody. Did any, did any Muslim say to you that I worship this stone? I challenge you. No Muslim will say that I worship this stone. 
All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Schwab. And uh, that concludes our debate. Ladies and gentlemen, I told Dr. Schwab we would go between one and two hours, and it's been uh, almost two complete hours. Although, uh, Dr. Schwab... No, just, just, give me one, just give me one minute. What he should have done, he should have proved to me that Paul, when he says, according to the scriptures, this is there in the scripture. There is not there in the scripture yeah. that... Come Jesus tomorrow. Rise from the dead. Yeah, if, no, uh, yeah, it's not yeah. there anywhere. Yeah, he uh, should have given that, but yeah, he didn't doctor, need all that. Doctor, doctor Shweb, uh, we, 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 we've been focusing on Muhammad this week, but we're planning on having uh, other weeks. Uh, so there will be you know, a week where we discuss the Trinity, a week where we discuss the Apostle Paul. So you're always welcome back if you want to have sure. a, oh, an okay. in-depth okay. in discussion on, on one of those topics. Uh, I did. Uh, there were two... Uh, two invitations here uh, based on who's in the chat christian prince christian prince is in the chat and he said that if you want to debate him uh, you're welcome on his channel dr schwab christian prince has agreed uh, if you want to debate him you're welcome to do that on his channel and i saw people responding to farid responds so i'm assuming that farid responds was in the chat farid uh, you don't have to be in the chat you can join us live please uh, any night just give us heads up send me an email tell us bring you want Zachary to be on uh, bring a friend yeah bring a bring a friend so uh so in which case i wouldn't be moderator we'd have sort of a two-on-two -two discussion um and we'll have more coming up this week uh, special thanks to sam shamoon and thank you dr shoeb saeed thank you so much thank you so thank much thank you to have me, have me on. like you thank you thank you so much and I just request to be sincere. And if you are sincere, then you will accept Islam. As I said, that Jalaluddin Rumi said, I, you can beat 40 scholars with one fact, but you can't beat an idiot, in this case, insincere person with 40 facts. Thank you, doctor. And we'll catch you all next time. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Take care, buddy. Bye.